Welcome back to a new data science tutorial. In this video, we are going to talk about how we can predict the OS prices using XGBoost machine learning algorithm. I'm going to be showing you how we can train the XGBoost model, how we can do hyperparameter tuning, how we can see the feature importances, and also how we can export the model that you trained on your data set. Let's start coding. Okay, I'm in VS Code, but you can use any code that you want. And I'm going to create a notebook file, like let's say predict OS prices that IPMB and we are going to be working with Jupyter Notebook since it enables cell by cell execution and I'm going to select my kernel 3.11.4 and now we are ready to go at the first place I'm going to import pandas and numpy for data manipulation so I will say pandas as pt and import numpy as mp next up I'm going to import matplotlib and seaborn for data visualization. So import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, import seaborn as sns. And next up, what we are going to do is we are going to import the scikit-learn utilities. So from scikit-learn.datasets, import fetch California housing, which is going to be our data frame for this tutorial. Next up, I will say from scikit-learn model selection, import train test split. For splitting our data into training and testing sets and also the grid search cross-validation for hyperparameter tuning. Next up, we will say from scikit-learn preprocessing, import standard scalar. And at the final step of the scikit-learn, we will say from scikit-learn.metrics import mean squared error and r squared score for model evaluation now we are going to import the xgboost so we will say from xgboost import xgboost regressor and for exporting the model at the end we will import joblib and we are ready to go right now now we are going to load our data set. So for that, I will say California and it's going to be fetch California housing and I will pass as frame as true. So in here we are going to have something like this. And right now what I'm going to do is I will say I'm just going to clear the output from here. I will say X is going to be equal to the California dot data and y is going to be a to the california dot target so when i make this run and call x dot head we are going to see our x features easily in table format x contains all the features like median income house age number of rooms and y is the target column like this okay now let's split the data set so we will say x train x test Y train, Y test, and it's going to be train test split. You will say X, Y, and the test size of 0 0.2, which means that 20% of the data is going to be in the testing set and 80% is going to be on the training set. And we can just try print statements like training set, and it's going to be X train dot shape, and we can say print testing set and it's going to be x test the shape here they are okay now we are going to scale our features so i want to mention that xgboost is tree based so scaling isn't strictly necessary but if you want to standardize the features for better model stability we can use standard scalar so i also want to show you that scalar is going to be standard scalar we are going to initialize it like this Next up, I will say X train scaled. We are going to scale the X separately, the training and testing set, because we don't want data leakage. We will use transform X train for the X train scaled, but careful here on the X test scaled. What I'm going to do is I will say scalar dot transform. I'm not going to train the scalar on this. I'm not going to use the fit, only the transform X test. I will pass it like this. Okay now we have our scaled features and firstly we are going to train a baseline xgboost model 
For that, I will say XGBoost Baseline, XGBoost Regressor, and next up, I will say XGBoost Baseline dot Fit, X Train Scaled, and Y Train. So we are going to train our model like this. Also, what I want to do is I will say Import Warnings and Warnings filter warnings ignore like this because i don't want to see any kind of depreciation or some errors like that or warnings okay let's take predictions from our model how we can do that is we can say xgboost baseline dot predict and i'm directly going to pass the x test scaled so we are going to have an array like this i'm going to save those as y predictions and in here what i'm going to do is i'm going to say mean squared error is going to be mean squared error and it's going to be y test and y prediction we can directly call mean squared error like this it's 0 0.22 i'm going to go with r squared mainly so i will say r squared r squared score y test and y predictions so let's see the r squared 0 0.82 okay great now we are going to tune our parameters and see if we can pass this 0.82 so i want to mention that you want closer values to the one on the r squared side and lower values on the mean squared side like the lower mean squared error better the model higher r squared the better the model okay okay firstly we are going to define the parameter grid so these are going to be the possible parameters which are going to be tried out one by one number of estimators let's say 100 and 200 you can extend these values i'm just going to keep them not too much like i will say three five seven in here for the learning rate i will pass 0 0.01 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 for the subsample i will say 0 0.8 and 1 and for the comb sample by tree i will say like 0 0.8 and 1 so in here i'm going to initialize the grid search like grid search grid search cross validation estimator xg boost regressor and next up i will say parameter grid is going to be parameter grid cross validation let's set this to 5 scoring is going to be r squared verbos is going to be 2 and number of jobs is going to be 1 so when i say fit we are also going to see the cross validation data since i set the verbos so i will say search dot fit x train scaled and y train so let's see it here you can see that it goes one by one and gives all the information for those it's fitting for the five folds here i'm waiting for the result and now it's trying the combinations with learning rate one and i think it's close to the finishing right now after it tries out with the 0 0.2 ones here it is going to switch in short time when this finishes i'm going to be re-recording okay the training is finished and our model is ready right now let's just evaluate the results so i will say quit search best score and here is our r squared so i also want to see what was the best parameter selected here is the best parameter combination in our space that we defined and i also want to check the previous r squared from the baseline model i'm just going to say clear cell output here it was 0 0.82 and right now it's 0 0.84 awesome we improved our performance with hyperparameter tuning and we can directly use this model like grid search dot best estimator but actually i think it was like this yeah here it is we don't need to retrain a model we can directly use this 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can train a model with the best parameters directly. So these are both ways I generally use like this best estimator, but you can also use this method like best parameters, grid search, best parameters. Next up, I'm going to say I will pass these parameters into the XGPOS regression for training a model just like the best estimator in here. So I will say XGBoost final and it's going to be XGBoost regressor and I will pass the best parameters. Now I'm going to train my model like XGBoost final.fit, scaled, and Y train. So now I'm going to have my model ready like this. Now let's visualize which features were most important in predicting our prices. So I will say importances and it's going to be XGBoost final feature importances. And here, actually, I think I made a typo in here. Let me quickly check. Yeah, we need underscore at the end. So in the result of this, we are going to have something like this. And let's make it look better. So I will say features x dot columns and I will say seaborn bar plot x is going to be the importances and y is going to be the features and I will say plt title feature importances xg boost and I will say plt dot show and here it is the most important feature in predicting the ask prices was median income and the least important one was the population and you can see the feature importance plot from here. Awesome. Now I'm going to show you how we can export this model using joblib. It's pretty easy. You are going to say joblib.dump and you will pass the xgboost final and the name that you want to export like xgboost california model.pickle. And after that you are going to see that when I make this run, we are going to have the pickle file ready in here. And right now you can use this model in any kind of application that you want. You can create an API, you can create an user interface and use the model directly for the predictions and anything that you want. And let me quickly show you how you can load this model back from pickle format to do something that you can make predictions on using Joblib again. So easily you can say like loaded model and it's going to be joblib.load and you are going to pass this name in here. So I'm going to directly copy and paste this and after loading this like this, you can easily use it for making predictions. Like let's say predict x test scaled. So let's see our predictions like this. It is this easy. And in this video, we loaded the California housing data set, we train the baseline XGBoost model, tuned hyperparameters using grid search, related our final model and exported it using Joblib for future users. And that was it for this video. Thanks for watching. Let's get to the outro. Thanks for watching this video. I have a machine learning tutorials playlist where I have more than 50 videos just like this one. You can reach that playlist from the cards of this video or from the links in the description. Also, I'm sharing a new data science tutorial every week on my channel. You can subscribe for more videos like this. Have a great day.